Hey, this is Casey. Today, let's take a look at how to create this 2.5D gradient shading using Cinema 4D and Redshift. I'm going to use this sphere as an example. And let's first create a material and drag it onto our sphere. Now, I want to choose a color. And in this case, I want to have something like a blue color. One thing I want to mention is that because later we're going to use lights to affect the shading. So generally, we want the value of our color to be less than 50%. Because if the value is too high, it's easy to get overexposed when lighting is added later. And the colors may get washed out as well. So in this case, let's have something like 35%. Okay, let's bring up our IPR window. Now we can begin to add some lights. I will add an arrow light and make this sphere its target. We can start to move around this light. And I think I'm gonna place it above to create a top lighting effect. Before I move on, I want to mention some important concepts. So in the details tab, there are two parameters called diffuse and reflection. If I drag the diffuse value down to zero, we'll see all the blue on the sphere disappears. So basically the diffuse is responsible for the base color shading. On the other hand, if we dropped the reflection to zero, this white rectangle shape disappears. So it controls the direct reflections of our light source. When we change the shape of the light, the shape on the sphere changes too. With that in mind, we can adjust the material's reflection roughness. Well, notice the white from the light and the blue on the sphere blend together, creating a nice smooth gradient. I'll set this roughness to something like 0 0.6 and also adjust the position a bit. We can call this light as our key light. Now the top half looks great, but the bottom's too dark. I'm thinking of adding some room lights. Um, so let's duplicate this light and rename it to something like ring one. And then move it behind and below the sphere. I also want to make this light longer so it covers the curve of the bottom part. The white reflection from the light feels too strong to me. So let's dial it down to about 0.1 in the details tab. Awesome, let's duplicate this room light again. And this time we'll keep only the reflection. Move it around like this. and then decrease the exposure bits. This way we get a really nice white room light here. It's looking pretty good, but right now we only have blue color. Same as before, we'll use the lights to bring in some more colors. Let's again duplicate the key light, rename it to color, and move it around and we can see it already lights up our sphere. What we can do now is to change the color. For example, we can have a pink color. But we can notice that the sphere won't have pure pink on it. It's actually a mix of blue, pink and purple. When we decrease the reflection roughness of this material, we can see more clearly that the diffuse contribution of this light blends with the blue color, turning it purple, while the light's reflection itself is pink. So when we bring back our roughness, these colors all blend together. So if we want better control over the colors, we can adjust the diffuse and reflection contribution accordingly. In this case, I don't want the pink to stand out that much, so I'm gonna bring down the reflection. Awesome, so similarly, we can add more lights to add more colors. Let's have a color 2, and this time place it on the right side. 
and maybe make it green. We can see the reflection channel will show the green, while the diffuse will show the cyan, which is from the green and blue blending together. It all comes down to personal preferences when adjusting the color. For me, I'd keep the diffuse as one and have some degree of reflection like this. Again, maybe decrease the exposure a bit. Cool, and that's pretty much the foundation of this shading technique. Let's move on to check out a more complex example. In this scene, I have multiple objects. Some are still blue while others are purple or red. For certain objects, I even give them gradient colors like this to add some visual interest. At the same time, their roughness values also vary depending on the situation. So here I'm using 8 lights in total. The key light is coming from the top left. And in the project tab, I've excluded a cylinder and a small sphere from it. This way, we can precisely art direct the effect we want. Next, um, the first rim light is mainly hitting the big sphere. The second one boosts the white edges on all the spheres. The last one highlights the sides of the two spheres in the middle. I also have a fill light, which is mainly used to light the horizontal cylinder and the box. Finally, we have lights for adding color. The first one is orange, aimed specifically at the small sphere. The second one adds red and pink to the top right of this large sphere and the last blue light adds blue and purple to these two spheres and this cylinder. You can download the project file and dive deeper into it, link in the description below. And that's all for today's tutorial, I hope you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, see you next time.